Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stir you up to such a sudden flood of mutiny. They that have done this deed are honorable. What private griefs they have, alas, I know not, that made them do it. They are wise and honorable, and will no doubt with reasons answer you. I come not, friends, to steal away your hearts. I am no orator as Brutus is, but as you know me all. A plain, blunt man that loved my friend. And that they know full well that gave me public leave to speak of him. For I have neither wit, nor words, nor worth, action, nor utterance, nor the power of speech to stir men's blood. I only speak right on. I tell you that what you yourselves do know. Show you sweet Caesar's wounds. Poor, poor, dumb mouths, and bid them speak for me. But were I Brutus, and Brutus Antony, there were an Antony would ruffle up your spirits and put a tongue in every wound of Caesar that should move the stones of Rome to rise and mutiny. This is the air. That is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio, then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel might now do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness, yet not this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason to any other trust but that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. Yet if twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs in their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There is something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes, 